Thank you, Jay, and good afternoon. Thank you to, to the Society for inviting me. So what I'm going to do over the next 15 minutes is um, go over some of the uh, pertinent MR pointers for vis-a-vis -vis rectal cancer, go over some anatomy and imaging pointers, and then see how we can apply that information for better staging in rectal cancer. So when you look at the role of MR, uh, I think it's becoming a very essential tool for us when we image rect uh, rectal cancer in particular. So it's becoming a triaging modality. The surgeons are looking on us to provide information and then take that information and then uh, they sort of put the patients in different categories depending on whether the tumor is locally confined or has it spread within the pelvis or beyond the pelvis. So before we dwell on the, on the staging aspect of things, it's sort of important to emphasize the anatomy. When one looks at the MR anatomy of the rectum, I think the lower uh, extent is fairly clear. It's, it's the uh, level of the puborectalis muscle, as you see on this t 2 weighted image, which forms the junction between the anal canal and the rectum at the lower end. It's a superior aspect, which is the uh, with, with a challenge. And typically, if you drop a um, perpendicular uh, from the uh, top of the S1 down, the bowel below that is the rectum, and then you divide the rectum into thirds. We have the upper third, the middle third, and the lower third. And it's, it's very important Then, when you tell your technologist to image the rectum, they have to go proximally up to that level. Many a times they will not, and then you'll end up missing um, important findings in tumors that can extend up to the, um, to the upper rectum. And when one looks at the, the, the main sequence on MR that we look for staging rectal cancer is a T2 weighted sequence. And on the, on the T2 weighted sequence, there are two rings that you're trying to identify. You have the inner hyper intense ring or the bright ring, which is essentially a combination of the mucosa and the submucosa. And then you have the outer dark ring or the hypo intense ring, which is basically the muscularis propria. And that's the ring which is very important for local staging in rectal cancer. Two other pointers from technical perspective, one is of the T2-weighted images, the most important one that we use is the oblique axial. And by, by that we mean is the plane of axis is perpendicular to the, uh, the cancer that you see. And the reason why you want to do that is because that nicely lays out the tumor against the um, uh, muscularis and also gives a good view of the mesorectal fascia, which is very important when one comes to staging these cancers. The other important point in terms of technique, as you know, the, uh, you know, the, the key sequence is T2, and, the, and the, the, the single most important factor that affects contrast to noise or the ability to distinguish a tumor from, from the adjacent normal structures is the TE. So depending on which vendor platform you use, which uh, sequence you're using, make sure that your TE is optimized so that you can see the evil gray against the backdrop of the normal muscularis uh, propria, and you're able to distinguish the two in order for accurate staging. You don't want the images to, look, to like, look like this. These are pretty good from an anatomic perspective, but it really doesn't give you the information of the wall and the tumor as we would like it to be. So make sure you optimize the pro protocol when you start doing these, uh, these cases. So, so when one looks at reporting these cases, what we are essentially trying to communicate to the referring surgeons and the oncologist is, is the important aspects of staging. And as I told you, they use that information to, to treat. And it's very important distinction in terms of staging on how these patients are triaged through varying, varying types of uh, treatment. So proper communication is the key, and you need to have a certain uh, criteria that you include or certain key points that you include in your report uh, when, when, you're, when you're reading out these cases. So what are these, these points? And I've summarized them in these seven uh, sort of distinct uh, uh, pointers. So you need to tell them the location of the cancer whether it's an upper, mid, or lower rectum, distance from the anal verge, tumor characteristics in terms of the length of the cancer, whether it's circumferential or not, the T stage of the tumor, whether there is extension into the surrounding mesorectal fat or not, distance to, distance to the mesorectal fascia, which is also referred to as a circumferential resection margin, and that's a very important thing in, in, in MR that we need to comment on. Extramural vascular invasion, which is extension into the, uh, into the vessel surrounding the tumor, Relationship to the sphincter complex, because that can, again, profoundly influence surgery, and finally, nodal stage. So let's look at each of these points in terms of what, what are the key communicating um, issues. So the, the first is the location of the tumor. So what you're essentially doing is measuring the distance from the anal verge, as you're seeing in this particular low-lying rectal cancer, and this is the distance you need to tell them. Now, it's important to emphasize that the rectum sort of curves along, so when you're measuring the mid-rectal cancers, you know, make sure you go along the lumen of the bowel. Don't go the shortest distance that you see. This is important because when they're doing endoscopy, they know exactly where to look for the, for the tumor, and, 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 and you know, even from a surgical perspective. 
Uh, you tell them the length of the, the tumor, the, how long the tumor is within the lumen, and then whether there is extension of the tumor around, along the circumference of the bowel, whether it's you know, the entire circumference that is involved or it's part of the uh, circumference, circumference that is involved. Those are key pointers to, uh, to mention. One important point with rectal cancer is the luminal length is not as important a, a bad prognostic feature as is lateral extent. In other words, you can have tumor that affects a very short segment of the rectum, but it extends beyond the rectum into the adjacent fat. That's worse versus having a tumor that's extremely long and extend in, in, throughout the rectum. So that's something to keep in mind. The next comes the T stage, and this is again a very important aspect of what we can do with MR. So looking at this schematic diagram, the T1 stage is when the tumor is confined um, to less than the submucosa, T2 when it goes through the submucosa and invades the muscularis but doesn't go through the muscularis. T3 is when it goes through the muscularis and extends into the, peri uh, the mesorectal fat. And then T4 is when it goes into and, uh, and extends into the adjacent organs. Now, it's important to emphasize that with MR, you are not able to distinguish reliably between T1 and T2. And it really doesn't make a difference because both these two uh, stages are essentially treated with surgery. The real distinction comes between distinguishing T2 and T3 disease because that's sort of the dividing line. Once it is T3, they like to give new adjuvant chemo radiation to the patient before they bring the patient to surgery. And that's essentially what you want to be able to, to detect the T3s and T4s from the T1 and, and T2s, and that's sort of the dividing line in terms of MR. So let's look at some examples. This is a, a T1 um, cancer essentially confined to the, um, to the lumen. Here is T2, and again, with MR, it's very difficult to distinguish these two. Um, and like I said, you know, both are surgical candidates, so there is really no, no uh, importance in, in, in making the distinction or spending time in doing that. And here is a frank T3. You can see that there is a large nodule of tumor extending beyond the lumen of the bowel into the adjacent uh, mesorectal fat. Now, most um, staging failures with MR uh, come from uh, the problem in distinguishing T2 from borderline T3 disease. And so the, the reason behind that is uh, rectal cancer, like some other tumor types, invokes an a, a inflammatory response, and that leads to a desmoplastic reaction. And these are thin linear strands that can extend from the tumor, as you're seeing in this case. Do not mistake in calling that uh, a tumor extension into the mesorectal fat. So this is T2 disease. You can get a combination of both, and typically you, you would want to see a nodular extension of tumor beyond the muscularis into the mesorectal fat, as you're seeing here. Or in this particular instance, where you have both, you have the linear strand going out as well as a big nodular extension, and you can see that the black muscularis propria is, has been invaded, and there is a big nodule extending into the mesorectal fat. So this is T3 disease. And here is another example where you see both you have nodular extension and also linear desmoplastic reaction extending into the mesorectal fat. So this is T3 disease. So make sure that you, know, you are able to identify the desmoplastic reaction and don't confuse that for, for uh, T3 disease. And so there have been uh, various studies looking at you know, when you do see these linear strands, what do you do? So the, uh, the group out of, uh, Gina Brown's group out of, uh, out of UK uh, calls it T2, whereas uh, Regina Beach, who was the, you know, the first uh, person to sort of look at MR aspect of rectal cancer, puts it in the T3 basket. And this is something you have to discuss with your surgeon in terms of you know, how they triage the patients. The bottom line is if you do see speculations and you're not sure, you can call it T2 or early T3 disease and let them decide on what needs to be done, whether they need to triage the patient to new adjuvant or take the patient straight to surgery. And then this is frank T4 disease. Here it's extending into the prostate, so adjacent pelvic organs. And here is another different patient where tumor is extending into the vagina. Where, so involvement of adjacent pelvic organs falls into T4 uh, disease category. So that was T stage, moving on to the distance to the mesorectal fascia or the circumferential resection margin. So what is the mesorectal fascia? So it is a sort of a fibromuscular layer that surrounds the, um, uh, the uh, rectum and the surrounding fat. And this is how it is seen on MR. You can nicely see the outline of the mesorectal fascia. Here is the rectum with a tumor, and you can see the fat surrounding it. And it's important to emphasize that from an from anatomic perspective, it's like an inverted cone. As you go lower in the rectum, the mesorectal fascia very closely approximates the uh, rectum. And that is an important anatomic fact because imagine if you have tumor arising from the low rectum, then there is a higher likelihood of involving the mesorectal fascia. And that, that usually is, is bad prognosis. So what does a circumferential resection margin mean? So what ends up happening is when the surgeon is taking the tumor out uh, along with the mesorectal fat, they sort of dissect along the plane of the mesorectal fascia. And that's sort of the outer margin of the surgical resection um, 
uh, surgical resection. This is what the specimen looks like. So the circumferential resection margin essentially is the plane of the mesorectal fascia. And how do we assess that on MR? And one important point to emphasize is the CRM is the most important prognostic factor. So if you have tumor that extends to the margin of the mesorectal fascia, you could be guaranteed that there is a very, very high likelihood that the tumor is going to recur even if the patient uh, undergoes a successful surgery. And so how do we assess that with MR? You, you, you assess the shortest distance between the uh, margin of the tumor and our lymph node. And I, I, I want to emphasize this term. It's not only the primary tumor, but also positive nodes that are, that are in close proximity to the mesorectal fascia. So you measure the shortest distance and put that in your report. And so this is essentially what you're trying to do is you know, look at the outline of the mesorectal fascia and then measure the shortest distance between the outermost margin of the, of the uh, cancer and or a positive node and the uh, mesorectal fascia. So let's look at some cases now. So what is, what is good and what's bad? And so based on the distance between, or shortest distance between the tumor and the mesorectal fascia, you can subclass the T3 disease into what we call as a good T3, where the distance is more than six millimeters, or bad T3, where the distance is less than one millimeter, or in, in which case the tumor is ab abutting the, uh, the mesorectal fascia. Between one and six is sort of the gray area. It could go either way. So here is one example where you can see a nodular extension into the mesorectal fat, and you can see this distance is clearly more than uh, six millimeters, so this is good T3, as opposed to these two examples where you can see there is a broad-based tumor extension, and this is almost uh, approximating the mesorectal fascia, so that is bad T3. And here is another example where it is al almost abutting the mesorectal fascia, so, so this is where the CRM is threatened, and you, you definitely need to mention this in your report. And here is an example of a positive lymph node in close proximity. So although the tumor distance is more than six, the distance between a positive node and the mesorectal uh, uh, fascia outline is less than a millimeter. So this is also bad prognosis. Now, it's one, uh, one important point to emphasize is, although it is referred to as a circumferential resection margin, it's important to, to realize that the upper rectum has peritoneum that inserts on its anterior margin. So the circumferential resection margin is a misnomer when you come to the upper rectal tumors because the surgeon is not going to dissect the, uh, the peritoneum. So do not give them the shortest measurement where, the, where you see peritoneum inserting into the um, upper part of the rectum. And where does peritoneum insert on and how do you identify that on MR? So in men, it is typically at the level where you have the superior angle of the seminal vesicle, and you can see this thin line that inserts into the rectum. That's the peritoneal insertion on the sagittal and on axial. This is how it looks like. It has this sort of gulving kind of an appearance. And in women, it's usually at the uterocervical angle where you see the line of the peritoneum inserting onto the anterior margin of the rectum. And if you look at the surgical specimen of the, um, the total mesore mesorectal excision, the anterior part, you have this glistening sort of surface. This is the peritoneum insertion on the anterior part, and this is how it looks like posteriorly. So do not make the mistake of mentioning the shortest distance where you have the peritoneum because the surgeon is not going to dissect that part, and, and, and that is truly not a CRM there. So that's a misnomer in the upper rectum. And here is an example where you can see the uh, insertion and there is free fluid. And when you do see ascites and there is tumor in that location, that typically means that the tumor is invaded into the peritoneal lining, and that's considered T4 disease. So that's not a good uh, prognostic sign either. Extramural vascular invasion is where you see uh, the serpenginous um, uh, vessels that have tumor um, thrombus within them. They originate from the tumor and extend, and you can clearly identify them as, uh, as vessels. And again, even that is present, that's a sign of bad prognosis when you do see that mention that. Relationship to sphincter complex, um, uh, again, um, it was mentioned in an earlier talk in terms of the fistula. If you have rectal cancer that involves the uh, levator um, ani or the internal sphincter, that's considered T4 disease. And again, important to emphasize that to the, uh, uh, to the referring oncologist because then they'll triage the patient accordingly. Finally, moving on to nodal stage, um, the common lymph nodes that are involved in rectal cancer are the, uh, the nodes that accompany the inferior mesenteric um, uh, vessels. You can also get internal iliac lymph nodes uh, occasionally in these uh, patients. Um, most nodes are between five and seven millimeters in size. You can use morphology to a certain extent, so if, if you have irregular margins or heterogeneous signal, that usually means the nodes are metastatic. So when do you call nodes positive? So any mesorectal node which has irregular margins, heterogeneous signal, and is greater than or equal to eight millimeters, you need to raise suspicion that those could be positive. So I've gone through the things that you need to include in your report in terms of rectal cancer staging. And, and just in terms of take-home points, make sure that you have optimal TE. 
you know, and, and in terms of distinguishing T2 from T3, beware of desmoplastic reaction, and try and use a standardized report so that you include all the points that I mentioned in rectal cancer. Thank you.